I've run over a thousand Pathfinder sessions in Foundry. I know a thing or two. This video is going to show you five macros you can't live without. Seriously, you can't live without these. And if you're running Pathfinder 2E without these macros, you're going to regret not having had them sooner. I'll be teaching you how to find and install these macros. I'll also be teaching you how to use these macros properly and how to use them mid-session without freaking out. I've set up a timestamp for each of the five macros below, so browse around and see which one you want. Lastly, before we begin, if you like this kind of video, leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought. Presenting macro number one. Basic action macros. Has this ever happened to you? The party is having an intense battle with some kobolds when suddenly, Game Master, can I grapple him? Sure, you say. Roll me in athletics. Valeros rolls in athletics. He rolls a 25. Wait, what was the fortitude DC? Was it fortitude for grapple? Hold on one second. I'm trying to find it here. Uh. Was it? Was it reflex fortitude? Does anybody remember? Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was fortitude. Uh, plus four. That's a 14. Okay, that's a crit success. Valeros. Well done. That's happened to me before, and I bet it's happened to you. Presenting basic action macros. If you've been running Pathfinder Tree Sessions without this macro, you've been missing out. This macro lists every basic action your player characters can take in combat and more. And this macro needs to be handed out to all your players, so I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit. But first, a message from our sponsor, Cthulhu. You will obey. Here's how to install basic action macros in Foundry. Make sure you have the PF2E Workbench module installed in Foundry. Don't forget to enable the module in your world. Then you go to the compendium in the top right and type in Basic Action Macros. Drag that down to the macro bar, but before you use it, you probably want to open Settings. The PF2E Workbench settings and then select that checkbox right there. This allows your player characters to attempt basic actions they're not trained in, which is fun to let do sometimes. But if you think they're gonna get overwhelmed with the amount of actions, then maybe keep that unchecked. Regardless, this is how you use basic action macros properly. Go to the bottom left of your hotbar where there is a little folder icon called Browse Macro Directory. Click on that. Once the folder comes up, right click on basic action macros. Make sure you give all players observer permission. Now what you need to do is tell your players to go to the folder icon in the bottom left. They should find basic action macros and drag this out to their hotbar. Now you may be wondering what the point of all this hassle was. Let me show you what basic action macros does. So you need to start off by targeting the Kobold Warrior. Hover over the Kobold Warrior and press T on your keyboard. That will target him. You need to select Valeros. Click on basic action macros at the bottom left and find Grapple. Remember, this is all alphabetical. And Valerius will roll exactly a 14 in this behalf. It'll tell you the success state. Your target is grabbed. You can quickly drag and drop the grab condition on the Cobalt Warrior. Basic Action Macros has a skill check for every situation. You want to demoralize? Definitely use Basic Action Macros because if you do, targeting the Cobalt Warrior, shouting in common, and succeeding, by plus zero, it gives you the frightened one and also the ability to apply the effects and immunity on the Kobold Warrior. So now you can see here that the Kobold is immune from Valeros's Demoralize for 10 minutes and so on and so forth for every single basic action your characters can take, including NPCs. Yes, you as a GM can use basic action macros for your kobolds. You and your players need to use this macro every single opportunity you get because it's gonna make everybody's lives so much easier. There is a small learning curve, but once you get used to it, it'll be worth it, I promise. Macro number two. Reaction used. It is an absolute pain trying to remember which enemies and players have used their reactions, especially at higher levels. This macro comes from a module that is not technically listed, so I'm going to give you the link in the description below and you can nab it. It's called PF2E Token Marker. This is how you grab it. Go to the URL I've linked in the description below. Right click on Manifest URL and copy the link address. Then in Foundry, click on Install Module on the very bottom of the Manifest URL, paste and install it. 
right here. Now, having made sure this module is activated in your world, go to the top right in the compendium and then type reaction used. You'll see two of each type of reaction used and you wanna import the one that has marker macros underneath it. Gonna save the macro and it'll show up in your macro folder. You can drag that to your macro bar. So now if Valerius wants to use his reaction as this cobalt warrior is running away, you can just hit the macro on the bottom left and the reaction use symbol will show up on him. This reaction use symbol is only meant to last one round and at the start of Valerius' next turn, it should drop off. Although I have seen it bug out sometimes, but it's still extremely useful. This module also has a lot of different other status effects you can put on your tokens. A super useful one is the counter, where you can put a number on the player characters. For example, if they're poisoned for six rounds, you can keep track of that. And that was macro number two. You got two and one technically. So let's talk about the third one. This one's also kind of simple, but also pretty useful. Macro number three. XP. This macro is invaluable for any game masters trying to balance their encounters, especially if you have more than four players or if you're running a homebrew. This macro is super simple to use. Once you grab it from the compendium, no module required, drag and drop it, and then select all your players and all your enemies. And it should tell you, once you click the macro, the XP budget for that encounter. Alternatively, you can just select all your enemies, click on the macro and type in the party size and the party level. And it should give you the encounter budget as well. That's it. That's the macro. Were you expecting something else? It's not very hard to use, but it's pretty crucial for preparing for sessions, so. And if you wanna know more about encounter balance, well, subscribe and maybe you'll find out one day from a feature video. Macro number four. Reload. You haven't been keeping track of their bolts manually, have you? First, you need to install PF2E ranged combat. Make sure this module is enabled in your world. Now, this module is a bit tricky because if you don't use it right, you're going to be stuck. So pay attention. Let's assume Mauricial has a hand crossbow. Let's assume she has bolts for it as well. Make sure she has both bolts and hand crossbow in her inventory. Then, when she draws the hand crossbow, make sure you set the ammo as bolts. But if you attempt to target an enemy and strike, this error will pop up. Hand crossbow is not loaded. Go to the macros directory on the top right, type in reload, and then grab the first thing that comes up and drag it to the bottom. Now tap on seal and click on reload for me. There we go, her crossbow is loaded. When you do shoot with Mauricio, it's going to unload her crossbow which keeps track of it for you, as opposed to having to manually keep track if your crossbow is loaded or not. If she spends another action to reload, just tap the button again. I do recommend you hand this macro out to your players so that they can reload for themselves. This module has a lot of other macros you can use, so feel free to check it out. And lastly, this macro, which is not really technically a macro, but it's a macro in my mind, is my favorite of the bunch. This is a series of effects from the module PF2E Exploration Effects. It should show up in your modules listing uh, by typing in PF2E Exploration Effects. Make sure to install the module and definitely enable it in your world. Once you have enabled it, you can go to the compendium on the top right. Find the folder that says PF2E Exploration Effects and open up the PF2E Exploration Macro subfolder. You want to drag that question mark that says exploration activities to your macro bar. Okay, so in all technical sense, it is a macro. I was right. Here's the coolest part about this macro though. So, click on Ezrin and click on the uh, exploration activities macro and you will see all the exploration activities you can normally take while exploring. The way I normally run exploration activities is I ask my players what they're doing, whether it's searching or investigating or detecting magic. And then whatever exploration activity your players are doing, you drag and drop it on top of them. For example, Valerus could be defending, Marissal could be searching, Ezrin could be detecting magic, and Kyra could be investigating. But Pablo, you may ask, why are we using this instead of the official party sheet exploration activities? Hmm? The super short answer is I'd rather see it on their tokens than have to press a button on my keyboard. I'm lazy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the five essential macros you need for Pathfinder 2e in Foundry. 
If you like what you saw in this video and it was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. It really helps me with the algorithm. And let me know what video you'd like to see next.